Halleluja. Fresh breath of heaven. Praise God. The world is looking for fresh air and we're looking for a fresh breath from heaven, man. <laughs> Welcome to Tuesday Night Live. How's everybody? Are you blessed and highly flavored? Amen. We'll just be the salt of the world. Glory to God. <clears throat> Who we... You know, as we praise and worship, as we're praising the Lord, we're actually building a bridge to cross over, you know? And as we're getting God's attention, that bridge keeps getting built. So you never want to quit and focus on yourself. Amen? You want to keep your eyes on the Lord. Because once that bridge is built, you cross over. And let me share with you, there, there, there's something that happens when you cross over. It's called peace, joy, and righteousness. If you haven't crossed over, that means if you haven't gotten the peace, the joy, and righteousness manifested in you, desired in you, then you didn't cross over. Does everybody get it? This is what you look for. Because when you cross over, you don't care about nothing. You get into, so what? This is where people get frustrated all the time. The lack of crossing over. People get fearful and anxious and, and they go on medication for anxiety and it's because they don't cross over. Some of these doctors need to cross over. They stop prescribing this stuff and they start prescribing God's presence. Hallelujah. Matthew 6. You know, there's, you and I were born, <sighs> corrupt, <laughs> in the flesh. We were born with scales on our eyes and little devils, as we were called. That's why you needed to be born again, amen? Amen. But you, there's something, you know, you and I came from a place where everything was fulfilled. There was no want. You and I came from the presence of God where the fulfillment is so overwhelming, you know, hallelujah. And then when we came into this world, we lost everything. That's why you need to be born again. And the, the one thing is, is we fall into a place where there's that want of fulfillment. And when, because there's such a strong want of fulfillment, people begin to reward themselves. And this is what the enemy knows. See, one of the things that the Lord is exposing is a lot of strategies of the enemy so that we can overcome and or not be outwitted by the enemy. We outwit him. There is what we call a self-rewarding spirit. And in this self-rewarding spirit, it's also a self-destructive spirit. And Matthew 6 and verse 1. Take heed that you do not do your charitable deeds before men to be seen by them. Otherwise, you have no what? Reward from your Father in heaven. Therefore, when you do a charitable deed, do not what? Sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets that they may have glory from men. Uh, surely I say to you, they have their what? They have their reward. <laughs> but when you do a charitable deed, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, that your charitable deed may be in secret and your father who sees in secret will himself reward you what? Openly. Again, what he's saying is he's warning us about a self-rewarding attitude. 
Amen? Because so many times we do things and we're looking. Now, don't get me wrong. Because we were born in this physical state, the carnal arena is always looking to be fed. Always looking to be fulfilled. Listen, your flesh is always looking to be fulfilled no matter what. There's that battle. Amen? So it's always wanted to be rewarded. It likes to promote itself because it likes to feed pride and pride likes to feed the flesh. Hello. Not realizing that that attitude can fall into a destructive mode. I'll give you an example. Drug addict. Always looking to be self-rewarding. In fact, an individual, many times people work all day and they look for that reward. That bottle of beer, that joint, whatever. To them, it's a self-rewarding fulfillment. So, I mean, people work all week long to get that self-reward check. Amen? See, this is where we must labor on to the Lord, not on to ourselves. It's a self-reward. So, we've got to be careful that we don't fall into that self rewarding spirit because at the end of it is a self-destructing spirit. So as an addict or self-rewarder, BC, we shouldn't be self-rewarders now. We must be tentative to that influence and sensitive not to promote ourself and self-reward. So in other words, people would look for that fulfillment. They would work all week long. What was that song? Working for the weekend? Hello? They'd work all week long and then party all weekend long and recover Monday and Tuesday. Hello? And then work, 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 work. And then Friday, man, they're just waiting for that check to blow it again and give it to the devil. The problem was is that it was leading to a self-destructive mode. The wages of sin is still death no matter what. Amen? So when an individual, individuals take great risks by shooting dope, they're looking for a self-reward. By drinking, never knowing whether they're going to get killed drunk and driving. See, so there's a self-destructive arena there. And when an individual's not being fulfilled by a self-reward, they fall into a self-destruct. Is everybody okay? And this is influenced by the demonic realm that you and I must be careful of. Because even when you fall into an area of rejection, rejection is associated with an influence of the enemy because that person isn't being self-rewarding or self-fulfilling. Something's not happened. You know, when you make a mistake, who's the first one that shows up? The enemy. Amen? He's trying to promote that and, and encourage that mistake to bring you did not get rewarded. You got rejected. Let's go on a self-destruct mode. That's where people overeat. Hello? They overshop. Wow, they're looking for a self-reward to fulfill their emotional distress because they weren't rewarded or they weren't acknowledged. See, the flesh always wants to be acknowledged. To the, to the flesh, it's a reward to be acknowledged. It's a reward. Everybody get to understand what I'm saying. Psalm 18. The world is looking for self-reward. Now, there's nothing wrong with having a goal. Amen? We have goals, but our goals are always associated with filling destiny that's established by Christ. We're not looking to fill our own destiny. We're looking to fulfill the destiny that Christ has established us. In Psalm 18, in verse 20. Hallelujah. Let's go. Let's read it. The Lord rewarded me according to my what? righteousness and according to the cleanness of my hands he has recompensed me for i have kept the ways of the lord and i have not wickedly departed from my god for all his judgments were before me and i did not put away his statutes from me 
I was also blameless before him, and I kept myself from iniquity. Therefore the Lord has rewarded me according to my righteousness and according to the cleanness of my hands in his sight. I mean, this is very powerful. Rewards according, he said, I reward according to righteousness, obedience, and purity. Amen? But so many times we fall into that place for self-reward, self-acknowledgement. What we always want to do is acknowledge Christ. We want to express him in everything that we do. But he said he was rewarded by the Lord. See, when, when the Lord doesn't reward you, people like to reward themselves. And then, like I said, through either things, sayings, or whatever, or purchases, or, you know, people work and they want to be acknowledged of what they do. All of things for me and you is always bringing glory to God. If we're not bringing glory to the Lord, then we're bringing glory to ourselves, and when we're looking for a self-reward. And if you stay in that condition, you will end up in a destructive mode. James 3. Hallelujah. <laughs> Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. You know, I, I'm still amazed in so many things what God has done. And I know he's not done, but I'm grateful what he's done. It still baffles me. It always puts me in a place where I just want more of his presence. And I want to be able to glorify him more. What can I do, Lord? What can I do? I mean, this is in my heart. How, how, can, how can we reach more people? I don't look at what, how many people or what we've done. Does everybody understand? We don't look at what we've done, who we've taught, what God's, who God's used us to. We're looking at how can we go further. Amen? James 3.13. Let's speak it. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by what? Good content that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and what? Self-seeking in your hearts. Do not boast and lie against the truth. Self-seeking in your heart. What's your heart? It's the core of what? All desires. So it's self-seeking desires. That means self-rewarding. So an individual looks to be self-rewarded. Well, I deserve this. None of us deserve nothing. Verse 15. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, and demonic. Hello. So you know that self-rewarding attitude is demonic. Amen? For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. Wow. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Self-seeking, self-rewarding, self-destruction. Deuteronomy 29. You know, the attitude of, I paid my dues and I deserve it. That's self-rewarding. People get offended when they don't get promoted at work. How many know God promotes you, not man? And God will demote us too. And <laughs> Amen. Deuteronomy 29 verse 14. I make this covenant and this oath not with you alone, but with him who stands here with us today before the Lord our God, as well as with him who is not here with us today. 
verse 16. For you know that we dwelt in the land of Egypt and that we came through the nations which you passed by. And you saw their abominations and their idols which were among them, wood and stone, silver and gold, so that there were there might not be among you men and women of and or family or tribe whose hearts turns away today from the Lord our God to go and serve the gods of these nations and that there may not be among you a root being bitterness or wormwood and so it may not happen when he hears the words of this curse that he blesses himself in his own heart in other words he rewards himself does everybody see that Saying, I shall have peace even though I follow the dictates of my heart or my carnal desires. As though the drunkard could be included with the sober. Self-blessings are self-rewards. In other words, the heart is the core of all desire. People that are blessing themselves. Now again, there's nothing wrong with a direction from the Lord. He loves to bless us. But so many times people are trying to bless themselves without the direction of the Lord. Is everybody okay? Does everybody understand this? See, things that when we fall into that arena of self-rewarding, when he sees that because that's promoted by demonic realm, we, it can bring a curse on the things that God has already blessed us with. Does everybody understand? Why? Because now we're out of order, and now the enemy has access in turning things around. He just said it. Man, I'll bless the things. I'll, I'll, the things that were blessed, I will now curse. Why? Because you're following the dictates of your heart and not his. Hallelujah. Galatians 5. And when the Spirit was giving me this today, He was showing me the whole world and how long and in my past life and how we lived a self-rewarding lifestyle. That's carnal lifestyle. Self-rewarding lifestyle is a sinful lifestyle. And it's a self-destructive lifestyle. Galatians 5.13 Let's speak it for you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Only do not use this liberty or freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For all the laws fulfilled in one word, even in this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, beware lest you become consumed by one another. I say then walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh or the desire of the flesh. Amen. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish or you desire. But if you are led by the spirit, you're not under the law of sin and death. Now the works of the flesh are evident. Now these are self-rewarding desires. And what does he say? The works of the flesh is self-rewarding. And what are they? They're evident. They are adultery. Fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, which is associated with drugs and alcohol. Hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I've told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, even people that murder is a self-reward. Why? Because it's associated with anger and bitterness. Look at jealousy. What do they do? When, when that spirit comes upon them, they want fulfillment. Even vengeance can be a self-reward. Amen? But the Bible says vengeance belongs to the Lord. Amen? I mean, don't get me wrong. I want to see the wicked punished. But I don't want to see them go to hell. I want to see them get rescued. But sometimes they're not going to get rescued unless they get punished. I mean, sometimes you had, people had to go to jail to wake up. 
or other things to wake up, you know. So the flesh seeks to self-reward either by sin, lust, drugs, alcohol, addiction, and again, even overeating. Even exercise can be a self-reward. Does everybody get it? People spend a lot of time at the gym, man. They're looking for a self-reward. Don't get me wrong. There's nothing going wrong with going to work out or whatever. But I see people in there that are hours. And then they walk by the mirror. Self-reward. <laughs> then they trip over the bar in front of them and I laugh. But they're like, <laughs> yeah, hallelujah. Proverbs 13. Hallelujah. Proverbs 13, verse 12. Let's speak it. Proverbs 13, verse 12. Hope deferred makes the heart what? Oh, snap. Makes the heart sick. But when the desire comes, it is a tree of life. He who despises the word will be destroyed, but he who fears the commandment will be rewarded. The law of the wise is a fountain of life to turn one away from the snares of death. Let me share with you, false fulfillment is misdirected desire. Only in him do we want. We're looking for him. We always want to know what he wants, what the Lord wants. Amen? He is the restorer of what he wants to restore. So many times we have false hope in things to be restored in our lives when the Lord said, I can't restore it until you break it. Does everybody get it? Things cannot be restored unless sometimes it has to die first. And that's God's choice of whether he's going to restore it or not. Sometimes he's making a way of escape. And he's not going to restore it. But then there's that still hope that they'll be restored. That's self-rewarding. Does everybody get it? Why? Because it's a false hope. They're hoping in something that shouldn't be. I had a call one day, and you might have heard this from a woman. She said, listen, I, I need you to touch and agree with me about my husband. I said, I ain't touching and agree with nothing until I know what you're talking about. She says, I, I, I want us to be restored. I said, oh, well, where is he now? Oh, he's married. He's what? He's married. Well, how long has he been married? Two years. I said, so you want him to divorce the woman he's with now and be with you? She said, yes. Click. See ya. I tried to explain to her, listen, man, that's not what God wants. That's not how he operates. Then I realized that husband got rescued from her. I didn't tell her that though. She's what you call granola. Nutty and fruity. False hope totally. Again, things can't be done until we totally cut loose of all things that pertain to temporary lifestyle. Amen? Or else we are bound to it. And we're always looking for self-reward. You and I, our rewards are to rescue souls. Amen? We want to rescue and save as many people as possible. Get them the truth. Arm them with the prayer booklet. Man, I get all so excited when I hear people are getting armed. Yes! I had a call from... My brother-in-law today, he said, this is amazing. I said, what's amazing? He says, I'm talking to this preacher. 
And he says, yes. And I showed him the prayer booklet, and he's, he's looking, and he's going, man, I want more of these. I said, praise God. Why? So people can get armed. You know, after someone gets saved, you got to arm them so they become dangerous. Praise God. We're not, God, we don't want to just rescue people so they can just come and sit in a pew. Amen? So in this, we've got to come to a place that we got to cut loose of everything that pertains to the temporary lifestyle or we get bound to it. Your will, your desires, and your time. Amen? Everything must be his will, his desires, and his time. James 1. And again, don't get me wrong because we, we just want to set boundaries to where they're not stepped over. Amen? I mean, there's nothing wrong with encouraging someone. Hey, man, you're doing a good job. Keep going. And I love to say that to people when I see them, you know, they're out there jogging or whatever and they're very big. Man, if they come to a stop, I'll roll my mouth like, Good job. Keep doing it, man. Because I know they want to get healthy. You know, you want to encourage them. But the ones that wear masks, <laughs> you dummy. When they're out there jogging. <laughs> Hallelujah. Who told you that? Where did I say to go? James, thank you. <laughs> James 1. Verse 2, glory. I heard today my wife was telling me on the way that taxes lifted everything. Praise God, no more masks, no more pretenders. Open businesses, everything's been lifted. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 2, my brother encountered all joy when you fall into various trials. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces what? Patience or endurance. Listen, patience is to allow things to work itself out sometimes. Amen? But let patience have its what? Perfect work. That you may be perfect, complete, and lacking nothing. This is so powerful to me. If people just allow God to work it out and get out of the stinking way, he will reward us. So it's not a self-reward, it's a reward from God. I and mean, you know, you know when God rewards you and blesses you. And he does something spectacular or just something simple that you know, man, that's the Lord. You know, like he shows up. And he can show up in any kind of form or any kind of way. It is a reward from God that says, keep going. Keep going. And it, but, you know, we've got to let patience and endurance in our trials have its perfect work so that we are perfect, complete. In other words, if you're complete, you're, you're not movable. You're not going to change. You're going to stay the course no matter what's going on because you're not looking for an emotional reward. You're looking to serve him because we are servants of the Lord. Amen? We're not looking for self-fulfillment. We're fulfilled in his presence. Hallelujah. But let him, uh, and if any of you lacks wisdom, so he says obviously you need wisdom and understanding about all this, what to do. Let him ask of God who gives it all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose he's getting anything from the Lord. Why? Because he's double-minded and unstable in all of his ways. In other words, God can't trust him. That's an individual that's usually a self-rewarder. Does everybody get it? Patience is to allow things to work out in the hands of God. Fear and anxiousness is self-seeking destruction. It's incomplete. The person's not complete. They're always lacking. They're always looking for more. 
When you're in that position of complete, nothing moves you, no circumstances. You will not change. You won't compromise. Why? You, you will fulfill the call, purpose, and destiny no matter what. Because that's what you live for. First Timothy 1. You know, you see all of these advertisements and marketing and all kinds of stuff of all of these rich and famous. You know, they're always trying to promote a self-reward. If you do this, you can be just like this. You can get all this. I mean, isn't that how the devil attacked Jesus? Amen. If you worship me, yeah, you, I'll give you all the power you want. Of course, he lied. Because Jesus already had all the power anyways. <laughs> 1 Timothy 6, verse 3. Remember, great deception and great delusion is being released. And this is an area where the enemy is really messing up a lot of believers. Because they still want to be in competition with the carnal world. We're not in competition with the carnal world. We have dominion over it. Verse 3, let's speak it. If anyone teaches otherwise and does not consent to the wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which accords with godliness, he is what? Proud, knowing nothing, but is obsessed with disputes and arguments over words from which come envy, strife, reviling, evil suspicions, useless wranglings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, who suppose that godliness is a means of gain from such withdrawal yourself. Now godliness with contentment is great gain, but we brought nothing into this world and is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and clothing with these, we shall be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and harmful lusts, which drown men in what? Destruction and perdition. In other words, self-rewarding always leads to self-destruction. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierce themselves through with many sorrows. But you men and women of God, flee these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold of eternal life to which you were called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. So powerful. The love of money is self-rewarding. That leads to self-destruction. Sometimes, it's, you know, people want things, and so they work very hard to get them. But the thing that we are desiring, we must find out whether it's of God or not. Amen? And now and there may be things that the Lord is saying, yes, you can have. I'll never forget. Listen, when the Lord said to me, go get a motorcycle. I first thought it was the devil. <laughs> Get behind me, you know. <laughs> Get out of there. That voice is crazy. So I heard it again. And it was gentle. I said, you want, want me to go? He says, it's time for you to get a bike. Because he knows I, I was a motorcycle rider for many years. And I lost it because of my destructive, self-rewarding attitude. B.C. <laughs> and so he was rewarding me. And uh, so I thought, well, okay, I'll look for a used Harley. And I started, one day I was just flicking the stations and uh, some chopper advertisement came on and I flicked through it. Orange County Chopper. That was, was a series. These guys were foul mouthed and nuts. But they made nice bikes. And so I was flicking through it, and the Lord says, go back there. I'm thinking, go back there? And I went back there, and, and I said, you want a bike like this? He said, yes. I want a bike that has my name on it. I want a bike that people are going to turn their heads, and it's going to reflect my name. 
See, because I wasn't going to get something without putting his name on it or something. And that's how that whole thing started. And then confirmation came and the finances came and everything else. But I didn't go to get a loan. Everything came. Why? Because when God says and he rewards you, you don't have to self-reward yourself and you don't have to work for all of it. Hello? It's different. When you just wait on the Lord, it comes. And so I still have the bike. Praise God. I don't drive it enough, but I still have it. Revelation 1. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 1. In verse um, 5. Revelation 1 verse 5. Let's speak it. Remember therefore from where you have... Oh, wrong one. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness and the firstborn from the dead, and a ruler over the kings of the earth, to him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. I love that. And has made us what? Kings. What's a king? A warrior. And priests to his God and Father to be glory and dominion forever and ever. In other words, you and I are called to be priests and kings, aren't we? Amen? That is an honor. That is a reward from God. To fulfill that position and call. It's a reward, not a self-reward. It is an honor to be able to minister to the Lord. It is an honor to be able to worship and get in his presence. He rewards us with his presence. And then he rewards us with peace, joy, and righteousness. Why? Because we are obedient to fight for his presence. In Malachi chapter 2. Every believer is called to be a priest. Every believer is called to be a warrior or a king. But not all are willing. In verse 1, Malachi chapter 2, verse 1, let's speak it. And now, O priest, this commandment is for you. If you will not hear... If you will not take it to heart to give glory to my name, says the Lord of hosts, I will send a curse upon you. And I will curse your what? Your blessings. Yes, I have cursed them already because you did not take heed to your heart. Behold, I will rebuke your descendants and spread refuge on your faces and refuse and refuse of, your, uh, refuse of your solemn feasts. And I will take you away with it. Then you shall know that I have sent this commandment to you. That my covenant with Levi may continue, says the Lord of hosts. My covenant was with him, one of life and peace. And I gave them to him that he might fear me. So he feared me and was reverent before my name. The law of truth was in his mouth. And injustice was not found on his lips. He walked with me in peace and iniquity. And, and, and turned many away from what? Iniquity. And he walked with me in peace and equity. And turned many away from iniquity. Again, this is a priest. Does everybody see that? And in this he said, listen. No compromise. No complacency. No self-rewarding. I will reward you. In fact, the Levites did not tithe at that time because they labored in the, in the sanctuary, which was their tithe. Their tithe was offering to God their life. Amen? And in that, they took care of everything. They took care of the finances, the distribution. They took of everything associated with the tabernacle. So they were servants and labored unto the Lord. 
So they didn't really, they got everything they needed, but they weren't paid. Hello? But they got everything else they needed. They ate the best of foods. They had everything. And you and I are called to be priests. Now don't use that for an excuse for not tithing. Amen? <laughs> well, I'm a priest. I don't need to tithe. Yeah, everything you own is cursed now, homie. They brought a, that brings a self-rewarding curse. Amen? <laughs> Ezekiel 13. Hallelujah. In verse 1, Ezekiel 13, verse 1. And a word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel who prophesy and say to those who prophesy out of their what? Their own hearts. Hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God, Woe to the foolish prophets who follow their own spirit, and they have seen nothing. O Israel, your prophets are like foxes in the deserts. You have not gone up into the gaps to build a wall for the house of Israel to stand in battle on the day of the Lord. They have envisioned fealty and false divination saying, thus says the Lord, but the Lord has not sent them, yet they hope that the word may be what? Confirmed. See, so many times they'll say, well, the Lord said this, or the Lord said that, so the Lord told me to bring a self-reward, but it really wasn't the Lord that sent, said it. Amen? I mean, it's all over the place, man. All over. And it brings a self-destructive opportunity for the enemy. We must be careful what we speak. We want to make sure that we're seeking his desires and not our own. Amen? Let's go to uh, Psalm 19. Psalm 19. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Verse 12. Psalm 19, verse 12. Let's speak it. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse me from secret faults and keep back your servant also from what? Presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me, then I shall be blameless, and I shall be innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Presumptuous sins is false hope. It's false hope. It's false hope in self-seeking rewards, in labor. In other words, we glory unto the Lord. Our obedience brings rewards from him. Amen? Our obedience brings rewards from him. How many of y'all know the devil likes to bless you out of position? Oh, man. The deal will come up, and people will purchase something, but it's out of position. But they'll believe it's from God. But they never waited on God to really tell them or show them. Even though things fell into place, it was really not from God from the beginning. 1 Timothy 6. I've seen many people purchase things out of God's timing. Remember, God hates debt. So do I. <laughs> I hate debt. Verse 11. Let's speak it, please. But you all made him. Oh, we already did this, didn't we? Well, praise God. Let's do it again. Verse 11. 
But you, O men and women of God, flee these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold of eternal life to which you were called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. I urge you in the sight of God who gives life to all things and before Christ Jesus who witnessed the good confession before Pontius Pilate that you keep his commandment without spot, blameless until our Lord Jesus Christ appearing which he will manifest in his own time. He who is the blessed and only potent and the King of kings and Lord of lords who alone has eternal Im immortality dwelling in an unapproachable light whom no man has seen or can see, to whom be honor and everlasting power forever and ever. Command those who are rich in this present age not to be what? Haughty, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy. He gives us, he's rewarding us. Amen? Let them do good that they may be rich in good works, ready to give, willing to share, storing up for themselves a good foundation for the time to come, that they may lay hold on eternal life. Powerful. See, self-seeking rewards are attached to self-seeking, destructive spirits. When desire is not met, <laughs> or sin is not met. Amen? Of course, we know that's called flesh, lust. I'm going to close at Hebrews 3. We are not self-seekers. We are seekers of Him. Hebrew 3, verse 7. Self-rewarding and self-destructive spirits. Do you ever notice some, sometimes there's individuals, and this is what happens when things will be going along great, all of a sudden, everything just falls apart. Self-destructive. Why? Because somewhere along that where everything was going great, there was self-rewarding in it. Does everybody get that? This is how the enemy works. He places something in position that's self-rewarding, knowing that after a period of time it's going to bring destructive. But we're going to outwit them. We're going to be prepared for those things. Amen? Verse 7. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, today if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. In the day of trial in the wilderness, where your fathers tested me, tried me, and saw my works forty years. Therefore, I was angry with that generation and said, they always go astray in their hearts. In other words, their desires. Amen? And they have not known my ways. So I swore my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of, law, of sin. For we have become partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. Well, it is said today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in rebellion. For who having heard rebelled, indeed was it not all who came out of Egypt led by Moses? Now with whom was he angry forty years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose corpses fell in the wilderness? To whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest? But those who did not obey. So we see that they could not enter because of unbelief. Again, the Holy Spirit his setting boundaries and protecting us and preparing us so that we can be sensitive to those things. Remember, the enemy wants to slide into self-reward because he knows it's just a matter of time. So we're going to take this opportunity and we're going to repent for every self-reward tonight because there are things that you and I self-rewarded and didn't even know. Amen? So let's just take this moment right now. Father, repeat after me. Father, in the name of Jesus. We come to you. And we, you know the enemy is deceptive. And Lord, we ask for your forgiveness. 
and not obeying your voice or your warning and practicing in self-reward. Whatever it is, through purchase, through disobedience, through lust, whatever it was, Lord, in our whole past up to this present, we repent for every self-reward. And we break that spirit off of us so we do not fall in a self-destructive state of being. We commit it all to you, Lord. We put it under the blood. And we ask that you reward us with your presence, peace, joy, and righteousness in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory.